What is this? Is this a green case? Really? The Mark Cube 110? Okay, let's slice this open so we can have a bit of a closer look. Except, who taught me how to cut? Okay, we finally got it open. All right, relax. Let's pull the case out. Wait, that, that's not a case. That's a cat. That's Bindi. What's she doing in there? Wait, no, that's Baby Yoda, something else. Green, what's going on here? Maybe I have to look a bit further down. Oh, what, an AIO? That's not the case at all. A Bendy again? What? Okay, hang on, it's right down the bottom. Okay, oh, oh, I think I found it. Here it is, all right, here we go. Ah, a green computer case. Finally, we got to it. <sighs> okay, let's make a video about a case. Hello there. Hello there. It is I, the Gear Seekers guy. Today we're checking out a new case from Deepcool. It's the Mark Cube 110 in green, although it's more of a teal. What we're going to do is we're going to do a build with it. We're going to take a bit of a closer look. We're going to do all of that jazz that we usually do with our case videos. So let's uh, jump into it and do a case thing. Alrighty, let's start off with panel removal. Now these deep cool cases have magnetic hinge doors. You just grab them, you pull them, and you lift them up. Really easy, right? Magnetic hinges, who would have thunk? Although they do do that on all of their cases. Front panel removal, just pull it. Pull it! Yep, there we go. <laughs> front panel removes just as easily as well. It's a solid front panel, so first off the bat, if you're looking for the greatest thermals on the face of the earth, you're just not gonna find it with this case, although we will be investigating that. Rear panel removal, same dealio. Two screws on the back, both captive so they won't fall out of the panel, and Bob's your uncle. As you can see, the whole chassis is in that green color. Well, the inside's actually kind of more blue, to be honest, it's a different shade. I kind of like the contrast inside. Gives you a couple really nice options for doing some cool customization. It's nice to see that they've kind of stepped out of the comfort zone of doing regular black and white cases and doing something so different. I can dig this, right? As usual, like with every other case, there's screws, there's a manual, which we're not gonna need because we're gonna take a look at everything, and some tweezers. <laughs> I said it again. Look at that guy. He's the funny guy on the internet. All right, hard drive mounting options. 2.5 inch SSD here, 2.5 inch SSD there. Uh, there's also a hard drive cage in the bottom of the case as well. And you could mount a drive to the top of the cage too. So you can have two drives here, one here, one here. That's four drives in total. In terms of motherboard support, this is an MATX case. So your options are ITX and MATX, and that's basically all you can do in this case. While we're on the topic of motherboards and space, let's talk about the CPU air cooler maximum height. You've got 165 millimeters of clearance for the CPU cooler if you were to be air cooling in this system, which we're not going to be doing in this video. There's also an included GPU support bracket, which is a very deep cool thing to do. And I like that they've included this on this case as well. It does make it a lot easier if you're using a big, fat, thick, chunky GPU so it doesn't sag all over the joint. In terms of GPU maximum length, you've got a maximum length of around 330 millimeters. Here's an RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio from MSI, and you can see that this quite easily fits in here. Obviously, I'm not mounting it, and even with this huge card, you'll still be able to mount the fans up the front too, so quite a bit of GPU clearance here. There's plenty of holes for cable routing. You've got these holes here for the motherboard and the power cables. You've also got this for EPS power and fan cables as well. Now people are gonna say, oh, there's no rubber grommets on this case. I don't think it matters. This case is super cheap. I think it's going for somewhere in the region of 50 US dollars. So you really can't complain that they don't include rubber grommets here. And also based on the design of the case, they wouldn't have actually been able to fit rubber grommets here because of the extrusions on the backside for cable management. Speaking of cable management, it's pretty excellent on this case. You've got tie down points on every single edge of every single hole. There's multiple, there's at least two on each edge and this is pretty awesome for a cheap case like this it's it's quite literally everywhere look i'm not even making this up you can see it all the way around here you've got 20 mils between the motherboard tray and the rear panel for cable management as well so you can 
squeeze quite a few cables between here. Front fan mount, you can do three 120 mil fans up the front, which we're gonna be doing on this case, as well as this 120 mil fan that's included with the case too. So you can do a 120 mil fan at the back. This included fan is not PWM, it's just DC powered. It's got a regular three pin connector and a Molex connector. This is a pretty cheap fan, but I wouldn't expect any less for a cheap case like this. That's not a bad thing either. That's just the price you pay for when you don't spend much money. There's also some fan mounts on the top of the case as well with the magnetic fan filter that's up there. You can fit a 280 mil AIO, a 240 mil AIO, or just two 120 or two 140 mil fans up there as well. There should be plenty of clearance between the rad with the fans and also RAM modules as well. So you're not gonna have many issues with that. Alrighty, that's enough chit chat about the case. I'm pretty sure I covered everything that you need to know about it. Uh, there's not that much going on here. It's quite a simple case. With that said, build time. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build in the Deep Cool Mark Cube 110 in green, or more like turquoise, or what's the other color? Teal. It's in like every other color you could imagine, except green. It's a it's a type of green. Let's be honest. Anyways, let's take a look at the thermals for the Mark Cube 110. As you're seeing on screen right now, with these components and this fan setup and everything here, not great. Uh, but 
But that's kind of the uh, thing with this case. It's not designed to be the best case thermally in the world. It's designed to be a cheap case that looks really good. And that's the thing with this case, right? I think it looks fantastic. I, I'm, I'm actually quite digging this color scheme. We've got a pink one as well. We're gonna be doing a build with that a little bit later. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. The reason why I picked it is for a case like this, it actually suits it quite well, especially thermally. It's not a super hot CPU. We put the 3600 on the ASRock B550M Steel Legend. I love this board. I, I actually, the B450 one in my opinion is actually a better board, but the B550 M1 will do as well. To cool the 3600, we're gonna use the brand new Gamax L240 ARGB from Deepcool. It's one of their newer AIOs. For RAM, it's completely overkill, but I went with 32 gigs of Team Group Extreme ARGB at 4,000 megahertz. I don't know why I did that. However, you guys probably noticed that the lighting on the RAM isn't configured. That's because I always have problems with this board and configuring the lighting for RAM. And the other trick is you can actually install things like Aura Sync, you can use uh, RGB Fusion, you, you can use Mystic Light, you can use any of the RGB softwares and sometimes you'll be able to configure the RAM, but actually none of them worked on here. I even tried the Triton Z RGB software as well to get it to work, but yeah, this is literally just how it is. It just gets stuck on this, just have to deal with it. Whatever, time to move on. The GPU is the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Gaming OC. We all know how I feel about the 3060, but I feel like it suits a build with these type of components. Not overkill, not too powerful, just about right, except for that price. You guys know how GPUs are at the moment. For the fans, I actually didn't use the fans that came with the cooler. I instead replaced them all with the brand new CF120 Pluses from Deepcool. I quite like these fans with the rings around the edge. The blades on these look really cool when the fans are spinning too. You can see a kind of a pattern in the fan and I felt like that would actually look quite good. Now, as far as the RGB configuration, I kind of cheated here, <laughs> let's be honest. Now we get asked quite a lot how I do the split lighting effect. Well, it depends on the software you use. For this, I actually cheekily stuck in a Commander Pro and I got the adapter cable that I made that converts Corsair RGB into any other RGB. And I basically just used IQ to configure the lighting on these fans because yeah, it's just the quickest and easiest way to do it if I'm doing a build like this. It saves me a whole lot of time. I don't have to fiddle around with getting stuff to work. I know that it's just gonna do the job in IQ really quickly. That's most of the components. There's a PC part picker list down below in the description if you wanna know what all of the stuff is. I'm not gonna go into the rest of it, but let's talk about the Mark Cube 110. Okay, here's how I feel about this case. It is definitely thermally not the best MATX case on the market. In fact, it's not even close. However, what it lacks in performance, it gets back in pure looks. I absolutely love the way this case looks. Not only that, this case is very, very easy to build in. Lots of tie down points for cable management. And especially for a case like this, I think Deepcool did a pretty good job. Now, if you're going to be building with a case like this, chances are you're not going to be using super high end components that are gonna get super hot. It's gonna be more of a moderately specced gaming PC or productivity PC. And I feel like for the price point, it's actually, it's, it's kind of on the money here. I think the US price, correct me if I'm wrong, I know the comments are gonna tell me that I'm wrong, but I think the US price is around 49 US dollars around there, or around 69 Australian dollars, which I think is a pretty fair price for an MATX case, considering they're becoming a bit more rare these days. And this color, these colors, I just love it. That's why I, uh, I wanted to build with it. I just, I love how this color looks. I'm a sucker for this color, by the way. Like I've always been into these green tones and that kind of stuff. And usually with green colors, they don't photograph very well, but this thing came out so sick. And that's the only word for it. It just looks sick. I like it. Let me know what you think about the Mark Cube 110. This is a pretty nice MATX case if you ask me. I know a lot of people won't be into it and they won't be into the color. They'll be like, oh, that's disgusting. But again, I just, I love it. What do you reckon, Claire? It's all right. Uh, it's all right. I love it. I think it looks really cool. Put a 
appreciate it. I would have a computer in this color. In fact, when I was doing case modding back in the early 2000s, I painted a lot of cases this color, like a lot of them. I, oh, I wish I had some photos, but you know, we didn't really have digital cameras as they were back then. Well, they existed, but they were very, very expensive. We didn't have camera phones, they didn't exist. Hey, iPods didn't even exist when, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I got into case modding, but this color is sweet. What do you reckon, Bindi? You wanna come say hi? Come on, come say hi. Come on, baby. Thank you, hey, buddy. How you doing, Bindi? You haven't been on the channel much lately, huh? Except you were in the intro today in that cheeky little intro that we did, huh? Did you like it? Did you like that intro? Don't show them that, Bindi. She's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna be like, don't move me, watch, see? She's being rude. She's, she's, oh, you're being rude, baby. Yeah, if you guys don't know, this is Bindi, this is our cat. She's an absolute sweetheart when she wants to be. What do you reckon, Bindi? Did you like your little intro? I'm just gonna slide you back a little bit. <laughs> she doesn't like when I move her like that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that cheeky little intro that we did. We, we wanted to uh, make it slightly different. Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available over on Patreon. If you want to get early access to videos like this one, it's over on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek, and you know how we do it these days, Claire. It's time to engage cinematic mode. Thanks for watching.